Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel. What's a beautiful day? How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. We got a lot to work on today. Um, what I want to do first of all is work with this cooldown for our weapons. So basically what it's going to help us do is put a cooldown on weapons so we can't attack indefinitely and every frame. And I'm not going to use this cooldown stuff we, we created in the last video because I figured why not just use the SFML provided stuff like the clock. Maybe that would be a good way for us to check stuff out because uh, it's pretty much frame rate independent as well. So yeah, let's let's try that. Um, but first of all, I did try some things here. I'm just going to undo this as we're using Git and we're going to go back to how it was. And this is how it looks right now. So we don't have anything to do with cooldown or anything like that. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna remove the cooldown stuff here in a cooldown. Just gonna remove that and also all this stuff. And what we're gonna do is remove this here. And we're gonna make sure everything is in init variables. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a little cleaner. But just make sure you make a SF clock here. Uh, tech clock and then we're gonna do a SF time uh, attack timer max something like that we can call this a attack timer actually uh, attack timer max and this is a if you hover on it or if you go look at the uh, implementation of it or you go to definition you'll see it should be a in 32 as milliseconds this is what we are looking for so what we could do here instead is make a sf uh, int 32 attack timer max and go ahead and define these timer uh, this attack timer dot restart we could just restart the clock as soon as we create this object and then this attack timer max equals let's say 500 milliseconds so this half a second between each attack we could do that so we're going to be working in milliseconds that's why we have this uh, we're initializing the variables here no problems next step would be to create a function that actually gets this for us so i'm going to do that here bool uh, or const bool get let's see attack timer we're not going to put a const after because we're going to reset it in the same function get attack timer this if this attack timer dot get elapsed time so this is how the clock in SFML works we haven't really used this before but the way it works is you get the elapsed time, which is a float, should be your time variable here. And then that variable itself is going to have three options for us. So either in micro, milli, or regular seconds. I'm going to do as milliseconds. And we're going to see if that is greater or equal to this attack timer max. So then we'll know that the time has elapsed. And we'll return true here for us. But we're also going to do this attack timer dot restart and that will be it pretty much it's just going to restart it for us and return true and we'll be good and i put it in here somewhere it should be fine get attack timer right there good and that is in the weapon class itself now i did open the player class as well we have a update attack here i'm pretty sure i want to remove this i don't really want to have that there so removing that update attack and I'm pretty sure I call it in the update function, which I also want to make sure I remove update attack. Good. And we're handling attack right now in game state. So that's why I'm here checking this out. And the, the idea here is whenever we click our mouse button, a bunch of things are going to happen. A bunch of things are going to, or checks are going to happen. Uh, but what I'm probably going to want to do is, depending on the context, what we're doing, if I click the right button and update input it will send a signal to this function or something where if attack is true we're just gonna go ahead and uh, 
uh, go ahead and uh, run this code here. But for now, we'll keep it hard coded like this. Uh, and just a regular if statement. I'm just going to do and and here. And here's where we're going to check. So this player get attack. Well, let's see. No, the get weapon. Get attack timer. There we go. And that is a con. So we're going to have to change the player. Get, uh, let's see, get weapon as well. Because we might want to have to change things on that. Get weapon. Remove the cons before weapon. Uh, here. Because we might have to change it. There we go. Get attack timer. Boom, boom, boom. Just to check that this is working. I'm going to go ahead in here. And I'm going to say std see out this attack timer um, let's see dot get elapsed time as milliseconds and we'll see if it gets reset or not am I recording right now yes okay so this is gonna just show us if we're attacking or not okay it is saying it is resetting it after each okay and he died too okay and this is gonna die as well hopefully let's kill it okay it died nice 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 now that is working for us it might be a little too long this timer uh, but I'm going to remove this and we're going to need to do things that show us that we're actually attacking some type of enemy. Um, for example, if we attack from the player, we're going to have to uh, make some kind of animation where the sword moves forward or something like that. And as the enemy takes damage, it's going to turn to red and it's going to kind of flicker red every time it takes damage or maybe move a little bit or something so we're going to make some kind of effects on that but the first thing i want to do really to help us out here um, is create a type of system for text tags and that's basically text floating up and disappearing and that is some kind of a resource thing that we're going to have to do and i really want this in place before we keep going because i want to see what's going on uh, in the world whenever I do things uh, let's see resources okay where are we gonna do this we're gonna put this in let's just put it in uh, GUI for now add a new class i will call it text tag system and then boom and we're also gonna create in this we're gonna create a text tag uh, class so there are going to be two classes here private good and then we're going to render and we're going to do all that crap uh, but we're also going to have a class text tag in here internally which is going to have its own private and public functions most probably just public because we want to just access these quickly good and we're going to do if and def uh, text tag text tag system h and if oh no that was already uh, define good we're skipping pragma once and that's good guys I just need to make sure okay and this is basically just gonna be a system which updates everything so void update maybe we're gonna have a const float uh, DT as well to see the distance we're gonna move each frame and then void render uh, SF render target pointer or reference pointer target we're gonna update all of these functions void add 
text tag. Good. Probably going to have a text tag object here. Let's see. Text tag pointer. Text tag. Text tag. Void remove text tag. Boom. And then we'll figure that out as we go along. This is pretty much it, guys and girls. And this is going to keep all our sprites and stuff. Texture, font, whatever we need here. I think a text and a font should be enough. And this is going to take a font. This is going to be a whole system which updates smaller text tags. So there you go, guys and girls. Thank you for watching this video. We're going to keep working on this tag system so we can see what's going on. Also, some attack animation, maybe something like that as we go on. Uh, but that'll be fine. Thank you so much for the support. Take care. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, right? Bye-bye.